Next, you're going to go over to Desmos.com and you're going to type in your equation. Now, when you go ahead and click start graphing, one thing that you definitely want to do is sign in. Because this equation is going to be so long and we're going to modify it with effects, we want the ability to save it to our account. And if you don't log in or create an account, uh, then it won't be logged in and every time you'll have to write it again from complete scratch. So let me go ahead and write in that equation. So I'm going to type y equals, and I'm going to type 1 sine of 5.587, but instead of typing the Greek letter theta that we've been writing by hand in this graphing software, which uses y and x, we're going to use x. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and add 0 0.5 sine, and then the 11.174x uh, instead of theta, and so on, until I am completely finished with the equation. The next thing I want to do is change the window to make it something that's a little easier to decipher what is going on. So, so the next thing I'm going to want to do just so I can have a better analysis on this is I want to kind of zoom in a little bit. And so you can go ahead and use your mouse to zoom in, but I prefer using the uh, graph settings so that I can separately affect the X and the Y. If they seem to be repeating so frequently, it's hard to see kind of the in-between like this one. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shrink the X range here, and I'm just going to go ahead and just pick something like negative uh, 6 to 6, and there we go. I can see a little more information. They're a little wider, um, and maybe I want to make them a little bit taller, so I can shrink this down to maybe negative uh, 5 to 5, and they're, they are a little bit taller, a little bit wider, and it's now easier to see what the waveform is doing, and then compare that later when I graph the waveform after it's gone through an effect. Make sure once again that when you're in Desmos that you log in so that you can save this and use it later.